Welcome everybody. My name is Isabel Chatelier. I'm a policy officer at the European Commission in DG Santé, the unit responsible for digital health and European reference networks. And I'm currently working on the legal initiative on the European health data space, which I will present to you now. So the uh, European House Data Space is a legal initiative that has been uh, announced uh, in the Commission Work Programme 2021. Uh, and the European House Data Space has several strands of work. Uh, a first pillar of the work is on uh, facilitating access to health data for uh, healthcare in a cross-border context, building on the current uh, cross-border healthcare directive. Uh, uh, a second strand of work is on the secondary use of health data, and we have a third strand of work that is related to digital health products and services and uh, facilitating a single market for digital health services and products, including AI products. But today, uh, we wanted to uh, inform you a little bit more about the second strand of the work, which is about the secondary use of health data. That is, how to facilitate access to health data for further use. Uh, for different purposes, such as research, innovation, uh, public uh, health policy making, uh, and regulatory decision making. And to do that, we are looking at uh, several uh, different kinds of measure, legislative and non-legislative measures, in order to provide for uh, the appropriate uh, framework and uh, conditions to facilitate and support this uh, secondary use of health data. Uh, currently, for the legal initiative, we, we, we are uh, working on uh, the better regulation aspects to analyze what are the current uh, problems uh, to overcome and uh, design uh, a number of policy options in order to overcome this, uh, these problems. But we have also a set of non-legislative measures that will also accompany the implementation of this European health uh, data space with uh, aspects relating to uh, further enhancing the quality of data uh, and also uh, work related to uh, support the uh, setting up of infrastructure for uh, the secondary use of health data and measures also to facilitate capacity building and training of uh, professionals, uh, which will be supported through different EU funding uh, and national funding. The legislative proposal for the European House data space um, needs to build uh, upon uh, different horizontal uh, regulatory frameworks uh, that are currently laid down in EU law. A first aspect of it is the general data protection regulation as we are uh, talking about the access to and the further processing of health data. These are uh, sensitive data that uh, have a specific level of protection under the general data protection regulation. And therefore the, the framework that needs to be built for the European health data space needs to fully respect the data protection rules at EU level. Another aspect uh, uh, that we need to take into account is also the proposal for a data governance act that um, uh, was adopted by the commission in November, lays down a horizontal framework for access to data in any kind of sector. And these are the quite common uh, rules that will apply to any data access and data sharing across sectors uh, in, in the EU. And for the European health data space, we need to uh, follow uh, on those rules and uh, we can complement them further for specific sectoral aspects uh, of the health sector. And finally, we are also very much looking into uh, ensuring uh, compliance also with the AI a regulatory framework. The Commission recently adopted a proposal to lay down a horizontal framework on artificial intelligence, and we are also uh, looking at how uh, the access to and uh, reuse of health data within the European health data space could help support also this uh, AI framework. If we look closer to the Data Governance Act, um, there is the first main pillar, which is about making access to public data, to data held by, by public bodies, uh, easier for uh, third parties. And for that, the Data Governance Act provides for the setting up of a national single information point that will refer 
the stakeholders were looking for the data to the right uh, data holders, the, the ones who, are the public bodies who hold this information. Um, and they also uh, will require uh, member states to designate uh, a national body with specific support functions to assist the public bodies in responding to requests for access to data. So this support function will have uh, resources uh, and staff that have uh, technical and legal uh, competences in order to be able to uh, analyze those access requests uh, and be able to disclose the information uh, in line with the data protection rules, the intellectual property rules, but also will provide an IT secure environment uh, to facilitate the disclosure of the data in a secure manner. And for that, for the European House data space, we are looking at complementing this horizontal framework by designating more specific uh, mechanisms to facilitate access to the health data uh, and to have uh, actually a, a, a body that could actually take decisions on the data that are accessible uh, in the European House data space. A uh, second aspect of the Data Governance Act uh, relates to uh, facilitating providers of data sharing services, whether they are uh, data sharing services to facilitate data sharing between business to business or between business to citizens or citizens to business. And um, in the European health data space, we will uh, explore further uh, how specific um, uh, rules and standards for processing health data should also be taken into account for the, by the providers of those data sharing services. A third component of the Data Governance Act relates to data altruism and tries to foster a trusted um, processing of data uh, for wider good purposes uh, by organizations so citizens can decide to provide their data to data altruism organization that will then um, further share the data with uh, interested third parties in accordance with uh, the purposes that the citizens have chosen uh, have chosen to disclose their data for and in the european house data space we want to complement that to look at whether uh, we need also to facilitate um, that national uh, bodies would have the management of such data altruism schemes in order to foster more trust by citizens into the, into the processing and reuse of their health data. And finally, in the data governance sector, there will be a governance mechanism at EU level to coordinate all the different uh, actors uh, of different sectors within the European Data Innovation Board uh, it will look in particular at cross-sectoral interoperability uh, specifications. And uh, similarly to that, in the European health data space, we are also looking at what kind of um, governance mechanisms we need to set up at EU level in order to have representatives of bodies dealing with secondary use of health data represented uh, at EU level and coordinate their work at EU level. Um, we have uh, started uh, uh, a better regulation process uh, in December 2020. We opened uh, our inception impact assessment for feedback. Uh, and this was open until February 2021. And we have received over 150 replies from stakeholders on the initiative that we are, um, that we are currently working on. And uh, as regards this trend of work on uh, secondary use of health data, uh, it is very uh, interesting to see that the stakeholders um, really insisted on a key and number of issues for this, uh, for building this European health data space. One main um, comment was that it needs to receive a strong and trusted governance framework. Uh, which should be fully compliant with the general data protection regulation and ethical requirements, that there should be full transparency uh, on the data reuse and also full security guaranteed to the, to the data that are being uh, processed. And it should also take a patient-centric approach. Uh, the stakeholders also pointed to the fact that there needs to be also alignment uh, of the governance uh, mechanisms at national level and EU level and also coherence uh, with the proposed Data Governance Act. 
Um, quite a lot of comments also insisted on the need for appropriate data quality and interoperability standards in order to facilitate um, a consistent approach uh, to access to health data and reuse of health data. Um, and um, there was also feedback on the, the way that cloud infrastructures, in particular federated cloud infrastructure, could help support the building of the infrastructure for the secondary use of health data. And finally, uh, also quite common comment from stakeholders was that uh, this data access and reuse for secondary uses of health data needs to rely on a broad engagement with the public, so the public should be quite actively uh, engaged. Uh, we published uh, on the 3rd of May a public consultation on the European House data space. Uh, this is open for uh, feedback until the 26th of July. And as regards a secondary use of health data, we have uh, highlighted a number of policy options that we are considering. Um, some of them are being alternative uh, policy options from uh, a lower level of intensity to a higher level of intensity. And we are seeking feedback from stakeholders to understand in what direction uh, we should build the European health data space for the, for this, uh, on these aspects. Um, for the secondary use of health data, what we are looking into, uh, first of all, is to understand what kind of mechanisms we need at national level in order to facilitate this access uh, to health data for reuse. Um, we have been observing uh, the developments in national level and some member states have started to implement so-called data permit authorities um, and uh, therefore we are uh, looking into whether we should also uh, build a, a model that has common elements uh, for setting up uh, those data permit authorities across the EU. Uh, another question is also as I mentioned previously, about the role of these data permit authorities uh, in uh, managing the data altruism schemes and being themselves a kind of intermediate between the citizens and the reusers uh, and managing the consent of individuals uh, and the reuse uh, in accordance with, uh, with the choices of the individual. A second uh, main pillar for the work that we are doing is also to assess what uh, is the content of the rules that we need to lay down with respect to access to health data so that it is in line with the GDPR and with the ethical requirements. And for that, we are uh, exploring what kind of health data categories we need to, in to provide access to uh, and wh whether we should, uh, how far should these health data categories uh, uh, be specified and uh, what kind of health data categories should the European health data space facilitate access to. Of course, we are looking at uh, purely medical data, electronic health records, uh, but beyond that, we are also looking at whether to include uh, data from uh, uh, social claim reimbursements, uh, genomic data and other types of data. And then we are also uh, uh, trying to understand what is the format uh, in which the data should be made accessible, whether uh, it should be anonymized, pseudonymized, or in what circumstances would uh, fully identifiable data sets be authorized to be provided to, to third parties. And next to that, we are also looking at specific conditions and safeguards that would need to be uh, fully respected in order to access uh, the data, um, as well as the security measures that would be needed to, to uh, access the data. Then uh, a third aspect of the work is also uh, how to facilitate access to data that are held by private parties uh, in order that they can also uh, uh, disclose the data for the benefit of, uh, of third parties and whether this um, access to health data held by private stakeholders uh, should continue uh, only through the data holder himself or should be facilitated through uh, a, a third party like a data permit authority and what kind of incentives would be necessary to, to facilitate this sharing of data by private stakeholders. And finally, at the EU level, we are also looking at what kind of governance mechanisms we need to establish uh, to facilitate coordination amongst member states uh, on the secondary use of health data. 
Um, and we are also uh, exploring uh, whether there would be a role for an EU data permit authority, uh, for example, with respect to transnational data or data that are uh, flowing cross border, like in the case of European reference networks, and whether such a body could facilitate uh, decisions on access to data uh, that are uh, purely uh, cross border. And finally, we are also uh, having uh, some questions about what kind of standards and specifications we need to, uh, to include uh, for the cross-border infrastructure. So just to recap, um, as I mentioned, we have launched the inception impact assessment and that was closed in February and we have received already the feedback, but we have now opened a full public consultation of the 3rd of May uh, with uh, feedback to be provided by the 26th of July. Uh, we are currently working on preparing our impact assessment for this initiative and we are relying uh, on a number of studies. Um, there is a study that was already um, finalized in February uh, on the assessment of the EU member states rules on health data in the light of GDPR, which has been very informative to understand uh, the situation of fragmentation within the member states as regards the implementation of the GDPR in health and research. We are currently finalizing a study on regulatory gaps and we have uh, currently two studies, one on the infrastructure and one on an, uh, to support the impact assessment that are ongoing. And next to that, we are also working with the member states in a joint action uh, towards the European health data space uh, that is also going to uh, provide the commission with a number of recommendations on those aspects of secondary use of health data. Uh, after we have completed our uh, impact assessment, we will uh, consult uh, uh, also the European Data Protection Supervisor on the, on the data protection aspects of the proposal. And this should lead us to adopt the legal proposal by the end of 2021 or at the beginning of 2022. I will now pass the floor to my colleague uh, Ender, uh, who will uh, guide you on the infrastructure and data ecosystem in the European health data space. I will now share my screen or before I start, um, my name is Andrew Sondo Jauregui. I'm a policy officer at Unit Center D3, the Director General for Health and Food Safety at the European Commission. And I work in the in a team working on, on digital health and particularly the initiative of the European Health Data Space, including the legal proposal, but also aspects related to infrastructure, for example, digital health services and products. I will now share my screen with the slides. In this presentation, I will, I will go a little bit deeper into the infrastructure and data ecosystems of the European health data space, particularly focusing on the, on the secondary use of health data. Uh, Isabel in the previous presentation was covering more the general, the overall context and the overall contents of the, of the legislative proposal. This is more focusing on the specific aspects uh, related to infrastructure and data. And uh, this is the brief overview of the, of the contents of this presentation. I will cover first the purposes of use of health data and the scope of the, of the European health data space infrastructure and data ecosystems for secondary use of health data. Uh, I will also uh, present uh, or describe um, very shortly the health data flows uh, across the European health data space. And I will also introduce pilot for the, the European health data space infrastructure for secondary uses of health data. And then I will finish the presentation with a very uh, short link with the EU for Health Health Program and a very, a very short uh, comment on what the short term future holds in this respect. So I think when we talk about the, the data and infrastructure ecosystem of the European health data space, I think it's important to uh, to distinguish between two key subsystems or subspaces in the European health data space. The first one relates to the, to the primary use of health data, which relates to the use of health data for healthcare provision, what we call EHCS1. And then secondary uses of health data are essentially any further reuse of such data. 
uh, and the main use cases in this space are policy making activities, regulatory activities, and also research and innovation. We typically call this secondary uses space, the European Health Data Space, CHU space, and that's also how we, we call the, the corresponding infrastructure. Um, when it comes to uh, locating the, the infrastructure for secondary uses in the European Health Data Space, I think it's important to go back to the slide that um, Isabel presented on the different dimensions. Uh, indeed, we're working on the European Health Data Space across different dimensions related to legal and governance aspects, also data quality, infrastructure, and capacity building. And in our case, we're mainly covering now the, the space of um, the infrastructure of secondary uses, the one that serves the use cases of better policy making and regulatory activities, and better research and innovation. In this respect, as um, already presented or already announced by the Health Commissioner uh, last year, um, Commissioner Kiriakides, there's ongoing preparation now for a pilot that will test this kind of infrastructure. Here, the TEDAS joint action is a key contributor as well as the other um, other forums and also the EU for Health program will be uh, the main source of funding for this infrastructure. Then also it's important to, to locate and to scope um, this infrastructure in the second pillar of the European health data space, the one that deals with secondary uses of health data. And the main purpose here, the main goal here is to uh, to address the fragmented infrastructure um, across the EU, where we see many uh, sectorial, and many disease-specific research infrastructures. And now the question is how we can bring this together and provide access to a variety of stakeholders. Uh, this brings me now to the, to the overview of the health data flows in the European health data space. Here you see different building blocks of the European health data space, data and infrastructure ecosystem, where we have the, let's say the regular um, data sources in the, in the healthcare system, electronic health records, different registries, administrative databases, for example, gathering information on reimbursements. And these have typically um, been the focus of um, cross-border exchanges. And that's also where the, the current infrastructure uh, across borders operates, my health at the EU or the so-called um, uh, the e-health digital service infrastructure, and it does a very good job in bringing together different sources uh, in this respect, and it serves the purpose of uh, supporting healthcare provision in a cross-border setting. Uh, now, the latest developments on, uh, on the technological side have also brought um, new elements to the, to the data ecosystem and to the infrastructure ecosystem uh, across member states, where we see now that uh, several digital health products and services, including several medical devices are now connected to the healthcare systems across member states. And we also see wellness apps or personal health uh, data spaces also coming into play. And then the question is now, how can we bring them all together under um, the same ecosystem within the European health data space? And also allow that these uh, new data sources can also be used for, um, for other purposes, the, the so-called the same secondary uses that I was mentioning earlier. So there's a need there that um, the European Health Data Space 2 infrastructure will need to uh, satisfy a gap that they will need to cover so that there is health data access for different communities um, in, the, in the health ecosystem. And this includes um, communities uh, in the area of, of market surveillance of digital health products or digital products or also uh, pharmaceutical products. Um, also the community in the area of public health uh, policy making and surveillance, entities uh, working on reimbursement, decision making, but also um, entities related to regulatory activities, for example, in the pharma area with EMA and medicines agencies across member states and also notified bodies. And finally, of course, uh, the research and development uh, for new treatments, for new techniques um, uh, for further deployment in the area of healthcare. So essentially the aim of the infrastructure in the area of secondary uses is essentially to enable these feedback loops where a broad range of, um, of stakeholders also are granted access to, to health data. But of course this needs to happen with a very high level of trust 
from uh, from different stakeholders, but particularly citizens, were uh, the main sources of um, of health data. Um, and this is uh, one of the key elements that we need to bear in mind, the control and also the trust of citizens. Um, and this, of course, in a context where there are common protocols, common rules and common, common governance frameworks that enables um, both the use of health data for healthcare provision, but also uh, further reuse through this infrastructure. Then when talking about this kind of infrastructure, it's important to talk about the nodes concept, which is essentially a concept that brings together data consumers and data producers in the space of the European health data space for secondary uses. Data consumers can be, um, as I was mentioning, uh, policymakers, regulators of researchers, depending on the use case. Data holders can be also um, different entities. They can be the healthcare providers themselves, uh, registry holders, but sometimes even the citizens themselves who generate data through um, through medical devices, for example, have uh, digital components. And then the nodes uh, would become essentially the entities that establish trust between the data holder and data consumer uh, so that the transaction um, can, take play, can take place, the exchange of health data takes place, again, in a secure and trustworthy manner between uh, all parties. Um, the node essentially acts, it can act as a, as a data holder uh, on its own or also as a data permit or authorization body that allows third parties to um, access health data for secondary purposes. And they can do this, um, as Isabel was mentioning, at national level, but they could also do it at a cross-border level, at European level. Who could this uh, European health data space two nodes be? Um, this is, of course, um, early in the process, but this could be um, member state entities, national entities, um, European uh, Union agencies, or even research infrastructures. But of course, this is dependent on how the, the architecture of the infrastructure comes together. And for that purpose, we're currently working on a pilot uh, for the ESDS2, essentially to understand the feasibility uh, of connecting different bodies and different stakeholders dealing with secondary use of health data at European level. And this involves data permit authorities, but also data sharing infrastructures and regulatory and public health bodies. So essentially the question is how these links that you see on the right-hand side of the slide um, should be established um, at the European level. This pilot is now a design phase, and the aim is to start implementation at the end of this year. Um, this is also something um, that we're covering with different purposes. First of all, the pilot should be uh, the first demonstrator for the rollout of EU-wide infrastructure later on um, with implementation of, of the eu for health program. And it should also be a test bed not only for the technical aspects of the European health data space, the IT infrastructure and data ecosystem, but also the governance aspects um, in this European health data space. Uh, as I was mentioning earlier, also at the beginning of my presentation, it's also important to highlight the, uh, the close links between the European health data space initiative and also the EU for health program, which among its goals, it has the strengthening of health systems and there, one important element is the digitization of health systems. Um, and of course, what, that's one of the key, um, key elements of the European health data space and also the unlocking of um, health data for further reuse and also for providing better healthcare. So with this um, presentation already reaching the, the end, um, I would like to just highlight the, the main elements in the, in the short term future. First of all, there is the ongoing preparation of the legislative proposal on the European health data space that Isabel has presented earlier in this presentation. And there it's important to highlight the open public consultation, which is currently uh, open for feedback from stakeholders, but also from citizens. And this is so until the end of July, until the 26th of July. There is also cooperation that has started between member states and several stakeholders in the joint action on the European health data space, so-called TEDAS joint action. And it's also um, 
important to highlight uh, finally the preparations that are ongoing for the pilot on the on the infrastructure. Uh, this is the end of my presentation. Um, I would like to thank the Portuguese presidency uh, for uh, for the opportunity uh, to present the European Health Data Space, and um, this is essentially um, all we wanted to present. Many thanks and goodbye.